have that. Yeah. Barakata Yahweh, Malak Walam. Blessed are you, Yahweh, King everlasting, the creator of heaven and earth and sea and all that in them is. We come to you now, Abba Yah, first and foremost, giving you all praise, honor, and esteem. You are more than worthy of our esteem, Abba Yah, the, the, the esteem that we can muster up as human beings, Abba Yah, of your greatness, your everlasting love for your children, Abba Yah, your grace and your mercy. We say halal, Yah, hallelujah. And we give you thanks, Abba Yah, Toda Rabba Abba, for hearing us and answering our prayers in due season at your will, Abba Yah. The praise reports that confirm that you still have your children, Yisrael, in the palms of your hands, Abba Yah. That no matter what valleys we go through, Abba Yah, that you, you, Abba Yah, deliver us. You give us shalom. You give us comfort, Abba Yah, and understanding. And we say, Toda Reba Abba, in all things, Tob and Rab, good and bad, Abba Yah, we give you thanks. We thank you, Abba Yah, for always providing for us what we need, feeding us, Abba Yah, from your table that's strengthening us, Abba Yah, encouraging us, reminding us, Abba Yah, to endure to the end. And Abba Yah, we just ask that if it's your will, Abba Yah, that you Forgive our forefathers for their trespasses, for their transgressions, Abba Yah. And we thank you for leading us in the truth, Abba Yah, that we understand our shortcomings, our iniquities. You showing us how to repent, Abba Yah, how to teshub, turn around. And ask for your forgiveness, Abba Yah, and we just ask that you Blot us, blot it out of your memory. We ask, Abba Yah, that you continue to strengthen Moray Samak and his Mishpaka. Give them comfort, Abba Yah. Give them understanding. Give them shalom as they mourn the loss of a pillar in their family, Abba Yah, and their Mishpaka. Give us comfort, Abba Yah. And for Zakain Lasimba and his Mishpaka, Adon Yosef, his son, give them shalom and comfort, Abba Yah, as they mourn the loss of father and grandfather. And Abba Yah, just, we ask that you inspire Moray Samak tonight, Abba Yah, lead us in your truth, in your word, let your word come out clean and crisp, Abba Yah. Let it find its target and penetrate. Continue to wash us, Abba Yah, and shape us into vessels of your will. That our light shines brighter and brighter unto your kingdom, your majesty. So blessed are you, Yahweh. Blessed is your name, Yahweh, and blessed is he that comes in your name. Hello, Yah. Ah, hello, yeah. Aman wa aman. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. And before I get started, I would just like to just set up another quick teflon for you to just bow our heads. And Heavenly Abba, I just ask if you will also remember Maury Yesterone, who just lost his father this week, and also Zakan Yelaji, who, who's just lost his father the day before I lost my Abba. And for all those who have lost that we may not even know us has a loss of a loved one this week, 
Father, I ask you to continue to bless and strengthen each of us and all of us, Father, that have gone through those that have, have just this week, last week, last month, or last year, or the beginning of this year that has lost loved ones that are going through bereavement. Father, just ask if you continue to strengthen us all and to give us joy in our heart as we praise and we esteem your set-apart name. Baruch Habab Hashem Yahuwah Haggadah Allahim. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 All right, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Mr. Shabbat Shalom, Maury. Shabbat Shalom. Try to try to cheer my cheer myself up just a little bit more before we get started. So if uh, if I don't get in the zone tonight, I just want y'all to know Eva Newkirk got my chair. So she got she she got my Shabbat Eve chair over there, all reclined in my my seat. But um. <laughs> hallelujah hallelujah you got to give up the seat for the elders that's right praise the most high all right so Mr. Bacar we'll be picking up tonight in um second Malachim and we'll be starting with chapter 21 tonight uh second kings uh second Malachim chapter 21 um and Kanaka, if you could let's take it from the top second uh second kings chapter 21 um, and we're not reading um, the chapters prior to because in the lesson last Shabbat, you know, we've already covered the Hezekiah chapters during our uh, armor sex, uh, service. So we will be starting at 21 tonight. Second King chapter 21. Manasseh was 12 years old when he began to reign and reigned 52 years or 55 years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Hephzibah. And he did that which was evil in the sight of Yah. After the abominations of the heathen, whom Yah cast out before the children of Israel. For he built up again the high places which Hezekiah, his father, had destroyed and reared up altars for Baal, and made a grove, and did as Ahab, the king of Israel, and worshipped all the hosts of heaven, and served them. And he built altars in the house of Yah, of which Yah said, in Jerusalem will I put my name. And he built altars for all the hosts of heaven in the two courts of the house of Yah. And he made his son pass through the fire, and observed times, and used enchantments, and dealt with familiar spirits and wizards. He wrought much wickedness in the sight of Yah to provoke him to anger. And he set a graven image in, of the grove that he had made in the house, of which Yah said to David and to Solomon his son, in this house and in Jerusalem, which I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel, will I put my name forever. Neither will I make the feet of Israel move any more out of the land which I gave their fathers. Only if they will observe to do according to all that I've commanded them, according to all that the law that my servant Moses commanded them. But they hearken not. And Manasseh seduced them to do more evil than did the nations whom Yah destroyed before the children of Israel. And Yah spake by his servants the prophets, saying, Because Manasseh, the king of Judah, have done these abominations and have done wickedly above all that the Amorites did which were before him and have made Judah to sin also with his idols. Therefore, thus saith the Elohim of Israel, behold, I am bringing such evil upon Judah, uh, Jerusalem and Judah that whosoever heareth of it, both his ears shall tingle. And I will stretch over Jerusalem the line of Samaria and the plummet of the house of Ahab. And I will wipe Jerusalem as a man wiping for dish, wiping it and turning it upside down. And I will forsake the remnant of mine inheritance and deliver them into the hand of their enemies. And they shall become a prey and a spoil to all their enemies. Because they have done that which was evil in my sight and have provoked me to anger. Since the day their fathers came forth out of Egypt, even until this day. Moab Manasseh shed innocent blood very much till he had filled Jerusalem from one end to another. Beside his sin, wherewith he made Judah to sin in doing that which was evil in the sight of Yah. 
Now the rest of the acts of Manasseh and all that he did and his sin that he sinned, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Judah? And Manasseh slept with his fathers and was buried in the garden of his own house, in the garden of Uzzah. And Ammon, his son, reigned in his stead. Ammon was 20 and two years old when he began to reign, and he reigned two years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Meshulameth, the daughter of Haruz, Haruz of Jot Jotbot. And he did that which was evil in the sight of Yah, as his father Manasseh did. And he walked in all the way that his father walked in and served the idols that his father served and worshiped them. And he forsook Yah of his fathers and walked not in the way of Yah. And the servants of Ammon conspired against him and slew the king in his own house. And the people of the land slew all them that had conspired against King Ammon. And the people of the land made Josiah his son king in his stead. Now the rest of the acts of Ammon which he did are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Judah. And he was buried in his sepulcher in the garden of Uzzah. And Josiah his son reigned in his stead. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's discuss this one first tonight. So as y'all know, we've been covering idolatry for quite a minute now. Um, and when you actually read uh, all the book, and when I say all the book, the Old as well as the New Testament, you will start to see how everything joins together and the common theme as to the reason why Israel was always being punished. Because from the beginning, even before there was an Israelite and before an Israelite was ever born, even before the flood or pre-flood, before the flood, people was into idolatry and not adhering to the word of Yah. And after the flood, of course, you know, there was always a residue or a remnant of those that would be righteous. And then there were those who would always turn back to wickedness or actually be wicked. And so that's the theme throughout the text. And so now what we're seeing in this Kings, as we've been reading from the book of first Kings to second Kings, what we're seeing is we're reading about prophets and we're reading about kings that were either wicked or righteous. And the majority that we're reading about is how these wicked kings always turn back to idolatry or some form of wickedness. Um, and what I'm looking at here is uh, starting off in 21, it says, Manasseh was 12 years old when he began to reign and reigned 50 and five years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Hezbollah. So Hezbollah. So my, I have a question before going. What do we notice about Manasseh? What's something that you notice about Manasseh? Only in verse one, before we go any further, what is something that you notice about him? His age. His age. Yes, he was young. He was what? Okay, so, so DJ said he was young, all right? So we notice his age, he was young. So what I want to go into also is focusing on how Children back in times past matured much quicker than children today. And it wasn't because the mind of a child cannot mature quickly, it's what we are giving the children. If you are training them up in the way they should go, now, of course we know he was wicked, but the point is they still knew right from wrong at a certain age. And as the scripture tells us in Proverbs, it says train up a child in the way they should go when he's old, they should not depart from it, meaning that in our actual tradition of cult, custom and culture, at a certain age, a young man, a young boy, or a young girl is actually supposed to already know Torah, right? They're supposed to know it by a certain age. And 12 years old, yes, you're not fully an adult, but your mind needs to already know Yah at the age of 12 years old, or either Shatan, but we know it should know Yah. So I just want to cover that. As we read through the scripture, we're going to find there are going to be several instances where there were kings that were young. Now we even know that Messiah, before he actually started his ministry and things like that, he said he was under a schoolmaster. So even though a child can have a duty or a function to be a king or someone in authority, even in their young age, they still have adults that are what? Their schoolmasters or their tutors or, or their guys that groom them into being ready for their, their, their office. But the point is the grooming starts at an early age. So a mistake that a lot of a lot of us have been making recently, and I don't literally mean us on this call, but I'm just saying in general, we have been watering the children down and letting them color instead of actually being in the word of the most high for them to learn and allowing them to ask their questions at their level. And we have impatience that when we have a study, the children should not only be listening to us ask our questions, but if they have a question that we like, well, we already know that 
for a child, we need their mind, we need to give their mind a chance to develop because good and evil starts at an early age. Either good or evil starts at an early age. It's going to be based upon how one is trained up or what they're exposed to. And then sometimes it can just be the manner of the child themselves. So it says, Manasseh was 12 years old when he began to reign and reigned 50 and five years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Hezbollah. And he did that which was evil in the sight of Yah after the abominations of the heathen whom Yah cast out before the children of Israel. For he built up again the high places which Hezekiah, his father, had destroyed. And he reared up the altars of Baal and made a grove as did Ahab, king of Israel, and worshiped all the hosts of heaven and served them. So one thing that I want to look at is we know a lot of times that people are judged by the actions of their children. People would talk about what you're not teaching them, what you're not training them. And by the way they act, it can actually make a parent look bad. And that is true. So children, you need to make sure that you are honoring your father and mother by doing what they command you to do, by walking upright and by representing Yah. But there is a time where sometimes what a child does is not because of what the parent is training them up to be or to do. It's just sometimes the child may be enticed by the adversary and just go in a direction that his spirit may take them in. Because we know here that it talk, when we talked about Hezekiah last week, Hezekiah tore stuff down. Hezekiah established the way of Yah. Hezekiah was righteous. And so all the stuff that, that was being torn down, the other kings left standing, the groves and certain images that were still left standing, that other kings before Hezekiah did not do away with, did not destroy. We know Hezekiah destroyed them. But Manasseh comes after him as he put in all that work and did what? Dishonored his father. He turned back to super wickedness. He did not only go back to the wickedness of Jeroboam, which was still wicked, but he did the wickedness of Jeroboam as well as the wickedness of Ahab, which brought in by our worship. Um, he he reestablished the groves and things that he uh that Hezekiah tore down. So this man, when he got in rulership, he actually reestablished wickedness in Israel. So when we read in the book of Ecclesiastes, um, Ecclesiastes it tells you. Um, there is nothing new under the sun. So a lot of times things are cyclical, meaning they, they repeat itself at some point. You know, you see good, then bad returns. There's someone that will always bring back the negative. And if you've been hearing um, Zakane Yaquab, and I think Ima Audrey said a couple of times that it is, it is easy to slip into idolatry. It is so easy to slip into it because some idolatry, we don't even know what it is. Now, there are certain things that we know not to bow to images. We're going to keep the Sabbath. There's things we know to do, but it's the little things that they add in that we don't catch that can be idolatry. Y'all wink at us when in our ignorance that we don't know that we're in that type of idolatry. But this idolatry that Manasseh reestablished was wickedness. He knew what he was doing. He reestablished. He went out of his way to rebuild idols, to reintroduce Baal worship after you had righteous men that come and try to get this stuff up out of the community of out of the nation. So what I want us to look at is sometimes a child does not always represent their parents, even though to the natural eye, we would judge parents based upon the actions of the children. But that's why when we read in the book of Ezekiel, the most I said that the father is not uh, punished or judged for the sin of a child, nor is the child punished for the sins of the fathers. And this is the reason the most I said this, Everybody has to have a personal relationship with the Most High. Everybody has to choose whether they're going to serve the Most High or a false one. And it's written all throughout the scriptures. So this man actually chose to reestablish wickedness. And the problem today is there's been those that have been trying to reestablish righteousness, but then there's those who always continue to reestablish the idols. And that's why we, at the time that we're living in, while we're trying to return to the truth, we have to make sure we're studying and removing any practices that has a touch of idolatry because some of it has been subtly um, added back in amongst us, all right? So he um, so it said he destroyed uh, all that Hezekiah destroyed. He rid up the altars of Baal and made a grove as did Ahab, king of Israel, and worshiped all the hosts of heaven and served them. He built altars in the house of Yah, of which Yah said in Jerusalem, I, put my, I will put my name, 
So the very house that's supposed to be the house of Yah, where the Mosai said he will put his name, they built altars in this house of Yah, which is very disrespectful. But as Zakan Yaakov always says, it's repackaged today. The same thing goes on. We may know that uh, many of the people that's in the church, they may not know the name of Yah. They don't know Hebrew, but they do know it's supposed to be what? The house of God. So when a person is going to try to seek of the Most High, they go to what's commonly called church to try to receive the word of the Most High from whoever the preacher, pastor, moray, shepherd, bishop, deacon, shalot, whether you use Hebraic or modern terms, they're going there to try to receive the word from the Kohanim or the priest of that day of that assembly, right? But the issue is when they go there, a lot of times in a lot of places, what's actually in the temples or the houses that's supposed to be dedicated to the Most High is altars that is built for the sacrifice of idols. And what does that look like newly packaged today? When we are offering sacrifice and praise on days that the most high hates, such as Christmas and Easter, and we're saying these are the most highest days when they have absolutely nothing to do with the most high, but we have all these uh, parties, ceremonies, services for those seasons and for those days in what's supposed to be the house of the most high in which you're supposed to go to that house to tell you, you should not be doing that. We're tearing this down because this is what you're supposed to learn in the house of Yah. But instead, they're going there because the place where Yah's name is supposed to be, they've actually reared up altars and built images of those which should not be present even today. So there's nothing new under the sun. The very thing that's happened here has happened in what's supposed to be the houses of Yah today. Verse 5, it says, and he built altars for all the hosts of heaven in the two courts of the house of, of Yah. And he made his sons, his son pass through the fire and observed times and used enchantments and dealt with familiar spirits and wizards. He wrought much wickedness in the sight of Yah to provoke him to anger. So all the things that the Torah is saying that you should not do, you should not be dealing with enchantments, familiar spirits, dealing with wizards, uh, tarot cards, readings, and not to really go there, but, and we won't go directly there, but some of our brothers and sisters have experienced mores, and I mean, most high, please forbid any others do that, but they've witnessed mores actually show up in certain services with tarot cards, trying to do readings. So this mysticism, these enchantments, there is so much that goes on. And the problem happens when sometimes some people get super smart and they're so intelligent that they always think there's more and there's more to it than what Yah says of us walking with our shield of faith and believing and trusting in him and allowing him to do the things necessary for us to be healed, saved, delivered, blessed. So people actually start leaning to the dark side and trying to do terror readings and predictions based upon those things in our community. So we don't need to be knocking the church. What we need to be doing, we don't need to knock the church. We don't need to knock any assembly. What we need to be doing is learning the word for ourselves to know that this word is written a certain way for a certain reason, because y'all already knew what would be going on, what has gone on before and what would go on again. And he's left his word so that we should be able to identify those things. And when we identify them, no matter what wonders they look like they're working, if the most I say do not partake of, we should not partake of. Cannot y'all jump for me to um, Deborah or Deuteronomy 18 verses 10 through 14. Deuteronomy 8, 10, 18, verses 10 through 14. Because we just want to go back to the law for a moment just to support uh, this verse that we just read. So uh, Deborah, uh, chapter 18, and we're going to go to verses 10 through 14, Kanakia. Deuteronomy 18, verse 10. There should not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that useth divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch. Well, pause it for a second, Kanaka. Does anyone know what it means when it says uh, he let his son pass through the fire, son or his daughter pass through the fire? You shall not let your son or daughter pass through the fire. Does anyone know what that's speaking of? What is what is, what that's actually talking about? Good answer, Zamiri. Uh, I'm going to let you stay quiet on that one. I want to give somebody else a chance, but that's a very good answer, sweetie. Anybody? All right, Shashamar. 
Sebastian, all praise to the most high. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yeah, it sounds like a um, child sacrifice to me. <laughs> so two witnesses, my daughter, my bot just said the exact same thing that you said. It sounds like, it looks like it is child sacrifice. The other nations had a custom of when they really want to uh, get a blessing through or they want to receive something from whatever God or whatever idol they worship, the highest sacrifice that could be offered is something that is close to you. And one of the closest things for a person to offer was their children. And it was common practice to offer children when you wanted to try to get something from some God or from some deity. So that is the thing that the Most High said you should not do. If we really want something from the Most High, do you know we all, all we have to do? Be obedient first and foremost and live according to his word. Fast and pray. The Most High does not require us to sacrifice our children in the fire. And when you look at it today, what we're looking at is when you look at these celebrities and some of the stuff they're doing, their children is not already just being dying in the fire, but they're putting their children up, being used for Satan's service to try to have our community think that it's okay for a little boy to be a girl, or for a girl to be a little boy. They're taking their children. And I'm going to, uh, you know, um, that book that uh, we was here talking about last night, I showed with some of you that there's a, a book that's being pushed to be in the school. And on the cover of the book, what well, is not even pushed to be in the school, it's already in the schools. So please start checking what your children are reading and bringing home. But th this is not the teenage years, this is the younger children. So there's a book, I don't remember the title now, but on the book, it has the image of a little boy with the hair covering on like the Emas wear sometimes. And you know when the Ema has a head wrap with the hair out of the top of it? So he has a head, a feminine hair wrap on with his hair out, like looking like women braids or something like that with earring, big hoop earrings on, on the cover of the book, trying to make it seem like it's okay to be like this. And some of the sponsors of the book is Gabrielle Union and Dwayne Wade. And we see Dwayne Wade's son. How are you a masculine NBA player with all these championships and you are a manly man and you are now, after you are now retired out of the NBA, you are now making a push for children to be able to accept being transgender and you are encouraging and your son is the face of transgender movement for children. That is a form of child sacrifice. As a parent, he's supposed to rebuke that kid. And you ain't gonna be caught in no family photos with us. You can't come to the games. Why are you saying to me, daddy? Yes, I am, you little sissy. That's the way it's supposed to be. I'm not gonna take you around until you get that twist out your wrist you stop shaking your hips. Now, am I saying you don't still love your children? No, you still love your children, but I have a face and an image and I'm not going to allow you to be on a TV screen and me to be pushing and saying, I support my son and you're buying him all this stuff and your wife is supporting it and y'all are going around and even starting to dress like him to show the support of this. That is nonsense. But the reason why these, these celebrities do these things and so another one, so I know a lot of people know Dwayne Wade, but there's another one that some may not know, the Imams and certain elders may not know, but there's another person now whose name is uh, uh, Jeezy, okay? Jeezy is a hip hop artist that's a rapper. Gangster rapper, one of the most thug rappers that came out back in the day when he came out. He is now, him and his wife is now saying that they're letting their children decide because a child should be able to decide what gender they are. What kind of sickness and madness is it that you can say that your son that's already been born a son as the most highest created him should be able to have the will and the opportunity to choose what gender he is? That's foolishness. But that is them celebrities sacrificing their children for fame and for riches because they've sold out the shaitan. That is a form of sacrifice. And as you said, Shashmar, you're right. It's nonsense. So... These are the things that the most I say don't do. So the customs that other people do, regardless of how sometimes people may frown upon us and, you know, per a conversation we had with some just last night, anyone that's like that, when, when y'all hear me teach it, I'm going to teach it hard because anybody that's like that, when they hear me teach it, they should want to be shamed to be like that. They should start being scared to be like that. However, we love anyone that's like that and we want to help you change if you're like that. We want to help your loved ones change if they're like that to let them know that we have a savior that has been sent to deliver all of us from whatever sin that we have. We just have to make the change and align ourselves with the righteousness 
of the Most High, but we cannot sugarcoat it. We cannot sacrifice our children. We cannot allow our children to think stuff is wrong, nor can we kill our children for our personal gain in society or position or wealth. These are the things that was customary in times past and they're still going on today. And I know, um, and the way they paint it on the media and on the internet, when you see these children go missing and things like that, um, uh, and just like, you know, the little child star like Macaulay Culkin or whatever his name was, they said how in Hollywood there were certain people and certain men that made them do certain things. And their parents allowed it, so why? For the fame. So they sacrificed their babies to let them be molested so that they could be in the entertainment industry so that they can receive the riches off of their child. That's sacrificing your children for gain. The most I said, we should not do any type of child sacrifice. Um, so, uh, so there should not be found among you any that make his uh, son or daughter to pass through the fire or that use a divination or an observer of times or an enchanter or a witch. So as we've been covering the past couple of weeks, there should be no witchcraft, no witch or warlock or wizards among us. We shouldn't deal with enchantments and all those things. We shouldn't get right here doing these chants. If you want to repeat anything, repeat our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Repeat, Yahuwah is my shepherd, I shall not want. He making me to lie down in green pastures. That's what we repeat. Repeat, I can do anything through Yahusha who strengthens me. Quote scripture, but don't do these little chants that people are giving you and all this little witchcraft and these little rituals to try to get receive anything from any God or think it's of the most high. Verse uh, 12, Kanakia. No, verse 11, Kanakia. Read it for me again in Deuteronomy 9, 18 and 11. Verse 11, or a charmer, or a consultant with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer. For all that do these things are an abomination unto Yah. And because of these abominations, Yah, your Elohim, do have drive them out from before you. You should be perfect with Yah, your Elohim. Okay, so remember, Mori Dawu taught a couple of weeks ago that lesson on becoming perfect and what it takes to become perfect. So the Most High said, no charmer, no consulter uh, with familiar spirits or wizard or necromancer. For all these things are an abomination to Yah. And the word in Hebrew for abomination is to'eba. It means something disgusting, vile. Something that the Most High really is disgusting. And it says these are an abominable to the Most High. Uh, and you should not do. And for this reason, this is the reason why the Most High drove the nations out from before you because they was doing this stuff. So don't you do this stuff. And the thing about it is, if my 13-year-old daughter, you're still 13, you're right, baby. You're 14 now. You're growing up a little fast on me. My 14-year-old bot, if she can say child sacrifice from reading the scripture, how is it we can be 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 65, 70 years old, and we cannot comprehend what idolatry looks like, what child sacrifice looks like, what taking the Most High's name in vain looks like. So these things, what the nation did before, before them, and that's why they got kicked out. So now why do you think Israel got kicked out of the land? Because what we're reading back now in the book of Kings when you had kings that were reestablished the very things that the Most High told us to reject, to clean up, do not partake of, and when you had a righteous king undo it, you had someone go back and find that stuff and reestablish it, it gets you expelled every time. And the reason why there's nothing new under the sun, the reason why the adversary don't want us reading the Old Testament, because we will be able to start to figure out what makes the Most High upset with us and why we are in the condition that we're in and how we can be freed from it. Verse 14 says, for these nations which thou shalt possess, hearken unto observers of times and unto diviners, but as for you, Yah, your Elohim, have not suffered ye to do so. So the Most High said, I did not allow you to do that. Why? I just want you to call on me. Call on my name and trust in me, says the Most High. That's all you have to do. Live upright and righteous. I've already written in the laws, in the Torah, blessed shall ye be if you keep my commandments, cursed shall ye be if you break my commandments. Jumping back to uh, 2 Kings uh, 21. So, um, so of course it said he, he was dealing with the familiar spirits. He did all these things. I'm dropping down and it said it provoked y'all to anger. Drop down to verse seven. 
and he set a graven image of the grove that he made in the house of Yah, said to David and to Solomon, his son, in this house and in Jerusalem, which I have chosen out of all tribes for Israel, will I put my name forever. So, of course, we all know that the adversary's main goal is to try to get people to serve him versus the Most High. So any place where the Most High has established his name, this is the places that, and when you read about Hanukkah, when they came into Jerusalem and they took the city over, what did they do? They took out the holy things and they established the abomination desolation, meaning in the house of Yah, where Yah's name was placed, they brought these, these groves, these images, the swine and pork, they broke Shabbat, they brought all these wicked customs in, and that made Yah upset. And so, again, they're doing the same thing today in, in modern times by bringing all this idolatry into the churches, into the synagogues, Knesset, Mishpachah, whichever term we're using. So, again, at our Mishpachah, we don't want to be judging any Mishpachah and saying that we are the place that has all truth. We're not going to say that. We are the place that's seeking the truth. And as we, the truth is revealed as we're trying to walk in the truth and not judge anyone else because we still have some idolatrous practices that when the Most High revealed to us that we're going to have to repent of, but we at least need to know how to study his word to start to learn to be able to observe and identify when it's something that's uh, contrary to Yah and then we correct it and we tear it down out of our hearts. And not only the place where the Most High said his name, as far as the building, we know that Yah has the people in which he sets his name on. So why is it that you think that Israel is the face of the now gay movement? Why is the Israelite little, the Israelite athletes, 250 pound strong men now the face of effeminate behavior? So they can go into the nation that is supposed to be called by the most high's name so that they can do what? Be defiled. But we as the priests of the Most High, Israel is supposed to be a nation of priests. And when we're speaking his word, we're not like those Israelites that are sitting out there speaking the hate doctrine. I'm not knocking them. I'm not trying to speak about them. I'm speaking about a false doctrine. The word does not tell us to hate the nations because of skin color. It tells you not to partake of the ways of the nation because their ways are wicked. The Most High has nothing to do with anybody's skin color. He looks at the heart and the worship and the gods that they serve. So when he tells us not to be like the nations, it's not a skin color thing. It's a how they worship, their custom, their traditions, and he tells us not to partake of them. But Israel is supposed to be a nation of priests. And if we're going to be a nation of priests, we're supposed to be the nation that has Yah's name on us, that represent the Most High, and we denounce idolatry, we tear it down, and we show all the other nations how to serve Yah. Because what does it look like if you're supposed to be a nation of priests just to be a priest unto yourself? See, when you read more of the word and you read the historical writings such as Jubilees, you see in the book of Jubilee how when uh, the tribes start to be divided up before Levi even knew he was going to be a priest, Jacob found out who was going to be the priest of the tribe. And he knew Levi, his son, was going to be, be the priest of the tribe. He understood that Judah was going to end up being the line of where kings come from. All these things is written in some of the historical writings. So there was a priest which was the tribe of Levi, which was a priest to the house of Israel, so that they would know the customs and traditions and the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High. But if Israel as a whole nation is supposed to be a nation of priests, then who are they supposed to be a priest to? To the world. We're supposed to be a light into the world to tell them to denounce idolatry, and this is how you serve Yah. So what we see is our people are now starting to be the face of wickedness, the face of something that used to for a long time was not even known in our community. It really wasn't really big in our community at one point. But now we are the biggest supporters of the gay pride movement. Verse eight, neither will I make the feet of Israel move. Uh, yeah, that's right. So verse eight, neither will I make the feet of Israel move anymore out of the land which I gave their fathers only if they will observe to do according to all that I've commanded them and according to all the Torah or the law that my servant Moses commanded them. So when you look at this, the Most High had already said, I would never cause their feet to move out of Israel again. I would never cause them to have to be removed. They would not be wanderers. They would not have to be in the wilderness. They would not be homeless. These are my children. Here's the home. Here's their home. I'm their God, their protector. All they have to do is seek me 
No diviners, no enchanters, no false idols. Don't give your children and offer your children to none of them idols. Just serve me and you will never be kicked out of your land ever again. This is your home and I'm your father. But it came with what? The condition and the condition was what? That they would observe and do according to as I have commanded them. So if they do what I tell them to do, says the Most High, I will bless them. But if they break this word, then all the curses that I've already said will happen. I've already spoke that. I have to fulfill that. But the Most High continually with repetition over and over, let Israel know that if you break my commandments, this is what will happen. But if you keep them, you will be blessed and I will provide for you. And so again, that's why the adversary does not want the churches reading the Old Testament today. Because if you can read with comprehension, you will have to see there is a reason why people get punished. And that punishment comes because of sin and not that you just believe in Jesus and you shall be saved. Now, yes, we do really believe in Yahusha as our savior. Yes, we do. We do believe he was sent. So I don't want anybody to jump below. Like, oh, they don't believe. Yes, we do believe in the Messiah. But we do not believe in believing in his name and living in sin and we should be saved. We believe in believing in his name, walking as he walked, talking as he talked, observing the days that he do, and going and sinning no more as he told everyone to do. That's what we believe in, how we be saved and how we follow him and as we walk as he walked. All right. So he says that they will never, their feet will never have to worry about being kicked out of the land as long as they observe all that I have commanded them and according to all the law that my servant Moses commanded them. But they hearken not. And Manasseh seduced them to do more evil than, than, than did the nations whom Yah destroyed before the children of Israel. So, you know, I get tired of Israel always wanting to point fingers at the other nations. And why do I get tired of Israel always wanting to point fingers at the other wicked nations? I'm going to read verse, verse 9 again, and I want somebody to answer me why I'm tired of hearing Israel always make the excuse of the wickedness of the nations and for the excuse of us being wicked. But they hearken not. And Manasseh seduced them to do more evil than did the nations whom Yah destroyed before the children of Israel. So why do y'all think that I'm saying, after reading that verse, I'm so tired of hearing Israelites try to blame other nations for our wickedness? Why do y'all think I'm saying that? Give me a couple of hands. What y'all get? All right, Shashamar, what you got? Ken, I would say, you know, um, the reason you know, Israel got, the Israelites got cursed and, you know, they got punished was because of their wickedness, you know, because they wanted to uh, be like the other nations, you know, they wanted to be like the other nations so bad, you know, the most high just let the, let the other nations uh, basically punish them, you know, so I yield. Thank you for that shot. Zamir, what were you saying? So my bot said, uh, because they were Israel, they did the wickedness, and Manasseh seduced them, and it was an Israelite that seduced them, and they were more wicked. Kanakia, yes, sir. Kanakia, oh, no. Kanakia. No, I just said, she, she just said, it. I, I was going to say, they was worse than the heathen. They were worse. But she just said, they were worse than the heathen. So Kanakia summed it up into Kanakia verbiage. They were worse than the heathen. So we want to always talk about what other nations do. Yes, ma'am, Imam Shoshan. Let's talk and about they it. chose to do the evil. They chose they, to do the evil. They chose to do the evil. Ain't nobody make them. Ain't nobody invite them to come do the evil. They chose to do that evil. The most I already told you what not to do. They chose to do it and they did it better. <laughs> come on, I said they were worse than them. So when we look at this, you know, that's the reason why when, when you have those that want to sit out and spew out hate. No, we don't need to be spewing out hate. We need to be following what Leviticus tells us. We need to be acknowledging the sins of our forefathers and our sins and saying, this is why we're on punishment. Not this nation is oppressing us. We're oppressing ourselves. As long as we do not return to the Most High, we are oppressing ourselves. No one has the power to oppress us except that crafty council that they now have us willingly doing stuff they wouldn't even do. And we're out doing them. And I'm going to tell you, y'all look at some of the um, some of the brothers that's uh that's uh, on the transgender side of things. When you see them sodomites, uh, 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 Jake, uh, Hebrews, Yaquabs, Yaakob, when we call it Jake, we call it short, that's short for Jacob, because they come from the, the seed of Jacob. They try to be prettier than a woman. They're more woman than a woman. 
which actually looks silly because you're trying to overdo it. Like it's just, you're doing too much. Even a woman is not that womanly. Like you over, they overdo being a woman when it's a man trying to be like a woman. We overdo the customs of the heathens that we go beyond what they were doing. But we would never go beyond serving Yah like we should. We could put a lot of effort into doing all kinds of wrong, but can we put that kind of effort into, I'm just going to go overboard and serving Yah. And I have one of the Akim that I'm going to give a testimony at some point. I've been telling them to wait for the right season. But, you know, there's, there's one of our Akim that, that has a, a, a strong testimony, and we're going to have to pray for him in, in, in time to come because he made a bold stand in 2021, is now coming over into 2022, and he's about to feel the effects of the decision he made because the world is not pleased with the choice that he made, but he stood on the word of Yah, and he lost his job. But it goes further than that, and we're going to let that testimony come at some time, most high willing, but we have to go overboard for Yah. You got people calling him names for standing for the creator and refusing to do certain things to keep a job, position, and a title and going to lose pension and all types of stuff for the choice that he made to stand on his belief in Yah. So I won't go into that because that's something that is for him to give the testimony. But I'm just saying, we're supposed to go overboard for Yah like that. The way Israel went overboard to be over wicked. So it says, but they hearken not. And Manasseh seduced them to do more evil than did the nations whom Yah destroyed before the children of Israel. And Yah spake by his servants, the prophets, saying. So again, Yah spake by his servants, the prophets, saying. Again, just showing when Yah sent prophets back then, what prophets came to say. You're going to get a job, or you're going to get that house, or you can get that ah. That ain't what the prophets came to do. And everybody want to line up in town when somebody's supposed to be a prophet. A prophet has come in town. Well, we got Shabbat service every week. And you don't want to come sit with us. We come right out of the word of the prophets. But when so-and-so coming in and want to come full of prophets, you got people want to run and flock to that nonsense. They hear a good word, but you're going to prophesy over my life. When what they should be prophesying over the lives is, if y'all don't repent and turn to the most high, you will not be saved. So it says that y'all spake by his, his servants, the prophet saying, because Manasseh, king of Yehuda or Judah, have done these abominations and have done wickedly above all the Amorites did which were before him, and have made Judah also sin with his idols. Therefore, this saith Yahuwah, Elohim, or God of Israel, behold, I am bringing such evil upon Jerusalem and Judah, and whatsoever hear, uh, and whosoever hear it of it, both his ears shall tingle. So when you hear about what I'm going to bring upon these people, my people, your ears going to tingle. Y'all ever seen somebody that had some strict parents? And you knew they was about to go home and get that discipline. <laughs> Your ears was tingling from like, you like, oh boy, that's going to be a bad day for so-and-so. I, I was that child. I was that child because, you know, some people, parents let them get away with stuff. But boy, my daddy would put that belt to me. So, I mean, you know, your ears continue when you knew what I was about to go home to get. But can you imagine y'all coming for his children, who he's upset with? He said, and whosoever hear what I'm going to do to them, ears shall tingle. I mean, he's fed up. And I'm going to do something about it because you are more wicked than them. I told you what not to do. I told you how to be blessed. Just serve me. You can remain in the land, but instead you reestablish wickedness. So I have to judge you now. Verse 12. Therefore, the said, Yah, Elohim. Oh, I read that already. 13. And I was stretched. Now, read, this one here is kind of uh, heavy to me, too. I was like, whoa, y'all. So it said, and I was stretched over Jerusalem, the line of Samaria, and the plum of the house of Ahab, and I will wipe Jerusalem as a man wipe a dish, wiping it and turning it upside down. Can someone tell me what they're getting out of the wiping a dish and turning it upside down? What visual are you getting that Yah saying that he's going to do to Jerusalem and to his people? I'm going to wipe it as a man wipe a dish and turn it upside down. What do y'all get from that? He's done. So he's done, that, that's true, he's done, but explain it for those who do not understand the word of God, who has been taught all you gotta do is believe and you should be saved. What is it saying, Zakan Yaakov? So you're right, my sister, he's done, but Zakan Yaakov, what you got for us, sir? Uh, the way I'm reading it, Moray, um, is, is uh, Jerusalem 
uh, the, 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 the capital of the Southern Kingdom. Uh, he's just gonna, he's gonna wipe that, that land clean of the dirtiness that, that, that Judah, mm -hmm. the Southern Kingdom has done and he's going to flip it upside down so, so nobody nobody can come in there uh, for a time being, you know, just like uh, you, 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 you clean your plates, you wipe the dirt off of it, you know, and you turn it upside down to dry so it'll be ready to be used at a later date. Thank you, Zachane. Thank you, my sister. So he said he's done with them. I'm so done that I'm going to turn my people upside. I'm going to turn that city upside down. I'm going to wipe it like you wipe a plate. And y'all know before you wash dishes, what do you do before you wash this? You go to the trash can and you scrape all the residue. You turn that plate upside down. You try to scrape everything out. You try to wipe it. Then you put it in that water and you wash it. Just try to get everything. I'm go it's not going to be any of you remaining. I'm fed up. I'm done with you. I'm wiping all y'all out because you're super wicked. So I'm cleaning house. And that's what it looked like. Y'all expelled them totally. Said I'm not leaving any. I'm cleaning house, said the most high. And so when we read this, we need to know what type of father we have. Our father is merciful. When it says mercy and do it forever, it does. But it comes a time when he's been so merciful that if you do not change before he said, I'm fed up, we might be wiped out. Was not the whole world wiped out with a flood? That was a wipeout. Drop it down to 14. And I will forsake the remnant of mine inheritance and deliver them into the hand of their enemies, and they should become a prey and a spoil to all their enemies. So again, you know, we hear a lot of people always wanna talk about oppression all the time, oppression, oppression, oppression. We gotta stop playing the oppression card. Understand why the oppression even exists. The oppression exists because of sinful nature, sinful behavior. And y'all said even the remnant of mine inherit mine inheritance, even the remnant, I'm going to give to somebody else. I'm going to deliver them into the hand to become a prey and a spoil to their enemies. So this is my inheritance. This is who I love, but I'm going to wipe them clean and I'm going to give them away. I'm going to let somebody else have them because they didn't appreciate me. They didn't appreciate what I was trying to do for them, says the Most High Yah. Because I have done that which was evil. Uh, speak out. Because they have done that which was evil in my sight and have provoked me to anger since the day their fathers came forth out of Egypt, even until this day. So what the most I was basically recalling is, for real, for real, Israel been wicked since they came from Egypt. I brought them into the land. I tried to do away with the ones that was wicked out there in the wilderness. But y'all really still brought the wickedness right over into the land. And I mean no offense to no one or to anyone. I want to go back to the land which the most high had for us. But I do not want to run my behind over there before I'm right. <laughs> I don't want to run over there before y'all says, well done, my good and faithful servant. It's time for y'all to come home. We have people want to run that don't know how to keep a commandment the first want to go to Israel. We got people that's not repentant of things that they've done here in this country and that they've done to somebody ready to run to Israel. We got to be right to go to that land. We were expelled from the land. We were wiped clean from the land because of our behavior. And he put us on punishment so we can learn our mistakes and get our grades up. And once you start passing your test and I feel you're ready, I will bring you home. But I kick you out of my house. That was called a house of prayer for all people because y'all came into my house that's called by my name that's supposed to be a house of prayer for all people and you established by all, you established all types of idols and you're doing all this false worship but y'all want to run back home with the same mess? So we're on a season, we're on punishment to get it right. This oppression is not something for us to be complaining about. It's something for us to understand and for us to explain to our children to our loved ones, why it exists? How did it come to be? You wanna know real black history? Black history are we are stiff necked and rebellious people. And we always want our hand out. We always got our hand out thinking we deserve something and we entitled to something. Yeah, it's wrong what happened to us. Yeah, it, it, hey, it's bad. We were slaves, yeah. We got disadvantages, yeah. But who gave us that curve? Who gave us that disadvantage? We did. 
because the power who said you didn't have to worry about any of that, we denied. And now we want to blame everybody else for our condition instead of saying, you know what? We need to get ourselves right so y'all will free us from the condition that we're in. Hallelujah. So he says, ever since they came out of Egypt, they were like this. Moreover, verse 16, moreover, Manasseh uh, shed innocent blood very much till he had filled Jerusalem from one end to another beside his sin, wherewith he made Judah to sin, to do to doing that which was evil in the sight of Yah. So there's murders, there's all type of innocent bloodshed that was going on. And we already know how Ahab shed innocent blood following his wife's lead. If you wanted somebody's property, what'd you do? Kill him. Innocent blood is being shed for the purpose of the gain of these wicked kings that have now reestablished unrighteousness. Now the rest of the acts of, of what Manasseh did were written in the book of the Chronicles, which we'll get to when we get to the book of the Chronicles. I just want to establish the pattern because what I want to go into is walking with Yah. So what we're going to start going into is actually walking with Yah, but what I'm focusing on is how they walk against Yah before we actually go into really focusing on how to really walk with Yah and our forefathers and what it looked like with those who really, really walked with Yah, all right? So we see what it looks like to not walk with Yah and to turn from Yah. So I'm um, dropping down now um, to verse uh, 19. So now we're coming up on Ammon. Ammon was 20 and two years old when he began to reign and he reigned two years in Jerusalem and his mother's name was Meshulameth, the daughter of Haruz of Jotha. And he did that which was evil in the sight of Yah as his father Manasseh did. And he walked in all the way that his father walked in and served the idols that is his father had served and worshiped them. And he forsook Yah, Elohim of his fathers and walked not in the way of Yah. So we know that we got 50 some years of Manasseh. Now his son comes and he's wicked following his footsteps. And this wickedness is going on and on. As Elder Herman would say, you take something 20 years, some people still will remember the way. Take something 50 years, it's gonna be less people to remember. You take that something 100 years, it may be one person around and still really no truth. Because the further away you get from truth and righteousness, the easier it is to keep pushing this evil and this wickedness. So these sons were now walking after the same wickedness. But now his servants uh, uh, conspired against him and they slew him. And so now the people are now establishing Josiah to be the king. We're now moving to 22. Before going forward, as I came, uh, Yaquab, do you have anything you want to bring out in this chapter? Uh, uh more. No. Okay. Uh, let, let's go. Uh, go forward. Um, Kanakia, chapter twenty-two. Second King, chapter twenty-two. Josiah was eight years old when he began to reign, and he reigned thirty and one years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Jediah, J Jedidah, the daughter of Adiah of Boscos. And he did that which was right in the sight of Yah, and walked in all the ways of David his father, and turned not aside to the right hand or to the left. And it came to pass in the 18th year of King Josiah that the king sent Shaphan, the son of Azaliah, the son of Meshulam, the scribe, to the house of Yah, saying, Go up to Hilkiah, the high priest that he may sum the silver which is brought into the house of Yah, which the keepers of the door have gathered of the people, and let them deliver it into the hand of the doers of the work that have the oversight of the house of Yah, and let them give it to the doers of the work which is in the house of Yah, to repair the breaches of the house, unto the carpenters and builders and masons, and to buy timber and hewn stone to repair the house. Howbeit there was no reckoning made with them of the money that was delivered into their hand, because they dealt faithfully. And Hilkiah the high priest said unto Shaphan the scribe, I found the book of the law in the house of Yah. And Hilkiah gave the book of, to Shaphan and he read it. And Shaphan the scribe came to the king and he brought the king word again and said, Your servants have gathered the money that was found in the house and have delivered it into the hand of them that do the work, that have the oversight of the house of Yah. And Shaphan described, showed the king, saying, 
Hilkiah the priest have delivered me a book. And Shaphan read it before the king. And it came to pass when the king had heard the words of the book of the law that he rent his clothes. And the king commanded Hilkiah the priest and Ahikam the son of Shaphan and Akbor the son of Micaiah and Shaphan the scribe and Isaiah a servant of the king saying go ye inquire of Yah for me and for the people and for all Judah concerning the words of this book that is found for great is the wrath of Yah that is kindled against us because our fathers have not hearkened unto the words of this book to do according to all that was written concerning us so Hilkiah the priest and Hikam and Akbar and Shaphan and Isaiah went to Huldah the prophetess, the wife of Shalom, the son of Tikva, the son of Harhas, the keeper of the wardrobe. Now she dwelt in Jerusalem in the college and they communed with her. And she said unto them, thus said Yahlim of Israel, tell the man that sent you to me, thus said Yah, behold, I will bring evil upon this place and upon the inhabitants thereof. Even all the words of the book which the king of Judah have read, because they have forsaken me and have burned incense unto other gods, that they might provoke me to anger with all the works of their hands. Therefore, my wrath shall be kindled against this place and shall not be quenched. But to the king of Judah, which sent you to inquire of Yah, thus shall you say to him, Thus saith Yahweh of Israel, as touching the words which you have heard. Because your heart was tender, and you have humbled yourself before Yah, when you heard what I spake against this place, and against the inhabitants thereof, that they should become a, de a desolation and a curse, and has rent your clothes and wept before me, I have also heard you, saith Yah. Behold, therefore I will gather you unto your fathers, and you shall be gathered unto your grave in peace, and your eyes shall not see all the evil which I will bring upon this place. And they brought the king word again. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Um, before I get ahead of myself, uh, there's some good reading in this chapter, and uh, I'm going to try to highlight some of the points, uh, one of the main points why I think this is a good read. Um, and I think it should uh, encourage us today, but I'm, I'll get to that point in just a moment. So now we see that Josiah was eight years old when he began to reign. Of course, we know he had schoolmasters or, 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 or men over him to, you know, as he was still a young man, but he, you know, his line, as one was died, that he was the next one in line to be the king. So he began to reign. But now it said, he did that which was right in the sight of Yah and walked in all the way of David, his father, and turned not aside to the right hand or to the left, meaning how the Most High's word is written and what the Most High said do and the way King David followed it, that's what I'm going to follow. I'm not going to veer to the left, nor to the right. I'm not going to add to it. I'm not going to take from. I'm doing this thing in the way that Yah says do it. And it came to pass in the 18th year of King Josiah that the king sent Shaphan, the son of Azaliah, the son of Malushalam, uh, uh, Mashulam, the scribe to the house of Yah, saying, go up to Hilkiah, the high priest, that he may sum the silver of the house, the, the silver which is brought into the house of Yah, which the keepers of the door have gathered of the people. So what we should be able to see here is that we know that when Manasseh got into the house of Yah, or not into the house of Yah only, when he got into office as being king, we know that he was not actually referencing the house of Yah as it was supposed to, because he did what? Start reestablished groves, he built uh Baals. He was doing all this false worship. So now when Josiah is now the king and he's a righteous king, we know that, uh, uh, me, me, uh, give me water, uh, Zah, please. Um, we know that uh, Manasseh, he brought all this evil. Now Josiah is now having to reestablish the house of God. And so some of the damage and some of the things that have taken place from the neglect of the house of Yah because of this wickedness of Manasseh and Ammon, Josiah is now saying, look, the silver and stuff that comes in that's been collected in the house of the Most High, take this and give it to those, pay it to the builders and those um, in the house of Yah uh, that's doing the work of the house of Yah, to the builders and things, so that we can reestablish and we can restore the house of the Most High. Verse 7, he says, Howbeit there was no reckoning made with them of the money 
that was delivered into the hand because they dealt faithfully. And Hilkiah, the high priest, said unto Shaphan the scribe, I have found the book of the Torah in the house of Yah. And Hilkiah gave the book to Shaphan and read it. So just real quick, I'm going to quote uh, 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 some more scripture. Uh, the book of Nehemiah, commonly called Nehemiah, the book of Ezra. Okay. Um, it's, it talks about when they came into the house of Yah after coming out of a captivity, when they came into the house of Yah, how they found the book of the Torah. This is common Torah or Tanakh theme. Whenever you are expelled from the house of the Most High, whenever Yah's got fed up and dumped you and sent you away, the temple is now abandoned. You are now gone because of the, your wickedness. When you are actually returning back or the Most High is giving you an opportunity to come back, the first thing we need to be trying to do is go to his word to figure out how to please him. So when he said, when Josiah got the house, like my heart want to do right by the Most High, but still send to the house of Yah to ask the Most High, how do we serve him? How do we actually walk upright or righteous? So now the high priest, uh, Shaphan went, uh, Shaphan the scribe went, and Hilkiah, uh, verse eight, and Hilkiah the high priest said unto Shaphan the scribe, I have found the book of the Torah in the house of Yah. So how is it today, modern time, we don't want the Torah read in the house of Yah, but that's what they said, this is what we found in the house of the Most High. We found the book of the Torah or the book of the law in the house of Yah, and he gave it to Shaphan and he read it. So what should we be doing? We should be reading the word of the Most High. And Shaphan the scribe came to the king and brought the king word again and said, your servants have gathered the money that was found in the house and have delivered it unto thy hand, unto the hand of them that do the work that have the oversight of the house of Yah. And Shaphan the scribe showed the king saying, Hilkiah the high priest delivered me a book and Shaphan read it before the king. And it came to pass when the king heard the words of the book of the Torah or the book of the law that he rent his clothes. So now I got this book. The high priest sent me back with this book. Let me read you some of this book. And as he's reading this book, the king is tearing his clothes off. Why? Because you rent your clothes as a way of humbling yourself. A, a way of getting ready to present yourself for a fast, a, a way to ask the Most High to please forgive us. Why? Because if you know we've been having in our nation for these past years before I came, became king, offering your children in the fire, all these enchantments, all these idols, and y'all know the book of the law, they're reading Leviticus, they're reading Deuteronomy, and he's saying, thou should not have this, thou should not do this, you should not do it after cussing other nations, and this is all that we've been doing because of the wickedness of the king, and now you're reading the word of God or the word of Yah to me, man, he tore his clothes off. And that's what we should do when we actually open the Most High's word and we see like, wow, this is what he requires of us, and we have not been doing it that way. We should want to tear our old clothes off so the Most High can reclothe us. And I'm talking in the spiritual sense. I'm not talking about getting naked. I'm just saying spiritually, we should want to tear off we should want to be ashamed of what we were doing in error because we see that what we've been taught in the church, what we've been taught in the synagogue, what we've been taught in those hate-filled Hebrew Israelite congregation is not what the word of Yah says. The word of Yah is not hate, it's love, but it's obedience, it's set-apartness, it's righteous. And so when we see what we've been doing in error, we should just want to return to it and we should want to denounce idolatry and that's what Josiah did also. He was going to have them denounce idolatry and start to reestablish the house of Yah with the righteousness of Yah according to the word of Yah. Um, read, uh, read on uh, for me, Kanaat. Yeah, pick up verse uh, 10 for me, Kanaat. And Shaphan the scribe showed the king, saying, Hilkiah the priest, have delivered me a book. And Shaphan read it before the king. And it came to pass when the king had heard the words of the book of the law, he, that he rents his clothes. And the king commanded Hilkiah the priest and Hikam, the son of Shaphan and Akbor, the son of Micaiah, and Shaphan the scribe, and Asiah, a servant of the king's saying, 
Go ye inquire of Yah for me and for the people and for all Judah concerning the words of this book that is found. For great is the wrath of Yah that is kindled against us because our fathers have not hearkened to the words of this book to do according unto all that is that which is written concerning us. Pause for a second for me. Let's, let's stop here for a second. So, Mr. McCall, let's have a little little dialogue right here. You know, I'll take the, take the floor for uh, several people. I'm focusing on, we know that he just read the word to the king. The king rent his garbs. Uh, now the king is sending back because after these laws was read, he sent back to the house of Yah, wanting to understand a little bit more about this, uh, this, this word that Yah said. In verse 13, it says, go ye inquire of Yah for me and for the people and for all Judah concerning the words of this book that is found, for great is the wrath of Yah that is kindled against us because our fathers have not hearkened unto the works, to the words of this book to do according unto all which is written concerning us. So my focal point is, if you're reading verse 13, as the king is processing through his thoughts of what he's hearing when he's hearing this word read to him, just y'all knowing some of the stories, some of the Torah, just let's have a discussion. What is the king thinking about? What's some of the thoughts that's on his mind when he's making this statement right here? What, what's he seeing? What's he hearing? If I need to rephrase the question, let me know. Like, what's this? What do you think is going in the king's mind for him making this statement of sending back to the house of Yah for what he found in this book? Yes, sir, Zakan Yaqua. Until I'm all right. Uh, hello, Yah, for, for this passage right here. I, I think, um, first and foremost, you know, he, he's, he's, he understands his responsibility as the king to the people. You know, and 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 he he definitely wants to be upright. He wants to be righteous. You know, and he said, for the people's sake, for the people's sake, and you know, for for the for the kingdom of Judah, let's go uh, back and ask the Most High to really give us clarity on 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 these words that we we were reading right now, because it looks like we we are not doing anything the way the Most High wants us to do it. So so. You know, for the sake of the of, of the kingdom, you know, <laughs> uh, make sure that 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 we got this thing right because we 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 definitely don't want to make the same mistakes as as our forefathers have done. That and that's what I'm seeing there first and foremost. He's like, you know, taking responsibility, of being the leader of the people, being the king, and saying, I, I need to walk in righteousness. You know, first and foremost as the leadership, and then make sure we understand what the Most High requires of us. You know, because we don't we don't want to go down that same path uh, that that our forefathers have done. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Yes, ma'am. Sorry, Mary. Hmm? Yeah, come so they can be with you. Um, what I get is that I think he was so excited because um he seen his as an opportunity to like get in the right state with Yah. And not just him, but the whole children of Israel, because um, our forefathers that were before them, they weren't, they were doing what was displeasing to Yah, but then he seen this and was like, they haven't been doing anything that was according to this book and what he's saying that was directed to us and we weren't doing it. And he, he just wanted Yah not to be angry with the children of Israel. That's it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I got to steal a line from my, from my out garage. That's my baby. That's my baby. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Shah Shamar, yes, sir. Tanya, yeah, I, I, I was basically going to, you know, agree with what everyone said, but I was basically just going to say that, you know, the king, he pointed the figure, you know, at Israel as a whole. Um, you know, so once you, you know, know that, what, once you find the root of the problem, once you understand that the root of the problem is you and your culture, and that's when you can start fixing the problem, you know, getting out of sin. I yield. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, Zakan Yaqua. Um, I, I just wanted to add, too, that that I think it's like a lot of us that, that come into the truth, the, the, those of us that wasn't born into this truth, that it's like, wow, man, this what we've been what we've been taught or what we've been accustomed to doing is totally against what we're reading right here. You know what I mean? So I think he's like, yeah, man, we 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 definitely gotta we gotta seek the most high to make sure we understand because 
you know, we we grew up thinking in a total different way, and and we and we saw that what we've been doing is totally against what we're reading here. Hallelujah! Thank you for that, Zakane. I want to tie your first statement in with your second statement, as along with Zamiria's statement. So your first statement is, as king, he's trying to take responsibility for the nation. As king, he's trying to lead well and trying to inquire to know how to lead. And Shah Shamar said the same thing. And as Amir was saying, he happened to see all that they were doing and the forefathers were doing, and it was nothing that y'all said. And that's what you were saying, uh, Zarkan Yaga, was like us today, that when we first woke up to the truth, we were looking like, we ain't doing none of this stuff. Like, what? Th this is not what the books say. Like, you know, that's what, this, that's what he's seeing. So I want to bring it vivid and visual to, to the others, the reason why me and Zarkan kind of laughing and got so much excitement for what we're seeing. Let's just get some more real quick. Kanak, y'all, let's get that, that book that we don't go to that much because we know too many Hebrew Israelites go here all the time. And it's about the only thing they ever teach. Well, let's go there tonight. Let's go to Deuteronomy 28. Let's get, let's get a little bit of that. 28 and start at one, Kanak, y'all. Deuteronomy 28, verse 1. And it shall come to pass if you shall hearken diligently unto the voice of Yah Elohim to observe and do all his commandments, which I command you this day, that Yah Elohim will set you on high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come on you and overtake you if you shall hearken unto the voice of Yah Elohim. Blessed shall you be in the city, and blessed shall you be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of your body, and the fruit of your ground, and the fruit of your cattle, the increase of your kind, and drop the flocks. Verse seven. We didn't get the whole chapter dropped on the verse 7. And y'all should cause your enemies that rise up against you to be smitten before your face. They shall come out against you one way and flee before you seven ways. And y'all should command the blessing upon you in your storehouses. And in all that you set at your hand unto, and he shall bless you in the land which Yahlim give you. Yah shall establish you and holy people unto himself, as he hath sworn unto you, if you shall keep the commandments of Yahlim and walk in his ways. And all the people of the oh, earth shall. Oh. So all that cannot get read, you've already heard all he read, so I'm gonna get to the summarized verse. And Yah shall establish you and holy people unto himself. As he has sworn unto you, if you shall keep the commandments of Yah, your Elohim, and walk in his ways, he will bless you in all those many ways that he says. So now, for Josiah to come in, and you know, Israel have been about wiped clean, they've been turned upside down as a dish, done been wiped out, we done had some struggles, there's been some captivities, there's always war. When you're reading, man, all these blessings should be on us if we keep the commandments. And then you read what we read at in Deuteronomy 18 already. You don't do any necromancy. You don't have any idols. You don't do any of this stuff. You don't follow any of these customs. And you now see what the customs of the nation was. And you can now see how extremely wicked your own people is, right? Man, should we be saying, oh, the oppressor, oh, we oppressed and they oppressed us. You should be like, man, I believe I know why we oppressed. <laughs> Not the oppressing us, and they always oppressing us. I believe I see why we have been oppressed. Drop down to verse uh, 14, Kanak, y'all. No, 15. Let's go right to 15. And it shall come to pass, if you will not hearken to the voice of Yah to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command you this day, that all these curses shall come upon you and overtake you. Cursed shall you be in the city, and cursed shall you be in the field. Cursed shall be your basket and your store. Cursed shall be the fruit of your body and the fruit of your land, the increase of your kind and flocks of your sheep. So go back and read the rest for your own reading time, but y'all can see everything now is going to be cursed shall you be, cursed shall you be, cursed shall you be, and all these different things, right? The cursed shall you be, the loins of your body, uh, your fruit of your field, of your kind. Drop down to verse 20, uh, 21, can I? And Yah shall make the pestilence cleave unto you, 
until he have consumed you from off the land, whether you go to possess it. Yasha smites you with a consumption and a fever, and with an inflammation, and with an extreme burning, and with a sword, and with blasting, and with mildew, and they shall pursue you until you perish. And your heaven, like that is a bitch wiping right there. Like you're gonna be ran about your land. You're gonna be on a run. You're gonna be destroyed. Drop down to verse twenty-four. Y'all shall make the rain of your land powder and dust. From heaven shall it come down upon you until you be destroyed. Y'all shall cause you to be smitten before your enemies. You shall go out one way against them and flee seven ways before them and shall be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth. Why are we being gunned down? Because your enemies should be killing you. Why are your enemies killing you? Because even in a land where your enemies are, you actually have become even more wicked that you can be so wicked that you think that you can rob somebody. The law come to try to arrest you. You run, you pull a gun. You already got a record. They already scared of you because you're acting wild and like animals. I hate to say it. You don't, you don't submit to the authority as the word tells you. Agree with that adversary quickly. If you don't quickly agree with that adversary that has a law over you, that's trying to question you, you out there popping off, you running your mouth, you so wild, you all profane, you're using all this bad language, your pants hanging off your butt. You look scary. I mean, look, I used to deal, I used to have to go and apprehend fugitives myself. I used to be security in nightclubs. Some of our people look scary when you look them thugs in the face. I ought to be trying to get up out of there when I go to try to make an arrest. And so, yeah, some of these shootings and a lot of these shooters are uncalled for, unjust, because it's some scary men with guns that has a job that they're not fit to do. But there is a law that says you should not steal. And if you have stolen and someone is now chasing you, it is because you are in sin. And your nation is treated a certain way because your nation was in sin. Therefore, all of us look alike. Therefore, sometimes we're just guilty by association of the wicked of our nation. So when the king is looking at this, it's the same that we should be doing today as Zach and Yaakov just said. When you open your book and it says, remember the Sabbath, to keep it holy, six days shall you labor and do all your work, but the seventh day you should rest. And you're saying, it's first day. We're just telling you, bless you, you'll be if you keep my commandments. And you like, they say, we don't have to keep the Sabbath. I got high blood pressure. But we ain't supposed to eat pork. And a doctor would tell you one of the leading causes of high blood pressure and cholesterol is that swine. And we want to know why we sick. But the word of the Most High tells you that the sickness of the nations will be upon you because your diet is worse than their diet. You take it all too far. And so as I can, y'all gonna say, when we actually start looking at this word, we start saying, wow, I see why we sick. I see why we punished. I see why the, the Lord, the, uh, what they're gonna say at first because they don't know his name, is upset with us. I'm gonna get just a little bit more of this, can I, yeah, just because this is one of the famous verses in the Hebrew community. Let's drop down to about 64. And y'all should scatter you among all people from the one end of the earth even into the other. Yeah, we know we was picked up on ships. Yeah, we know we was brought out of our homeland. Yeah, we know that. But who allowed the scattering to take place and why was the scattering so? Oh, we always being oppressed. We oppressed. It ain't fair how they treat. No, it's not fair how we treat y'all. And it's not fair how we would read this word with comprehension that we still have pastors that are actually selling the children to Molat because they're eating good, some of them, because they're selling out to Satan. So as long as I got a mega church and I'm teaching these mega lies, I'm going to be mega rich while lining the sheep up for destruction for slaughter. I'm sacrificing the people for my gain today. But when you read this, it says scatter... Uh, and, I, and y'all shall scatter thee among all people from one end of the earth, even until uh, the read on Kanak, y'all. And there you shall serve other gods which you nor your fathers have known, 
Even you're gonna forget y'all. So, and when you get scattered there and you go to their nations, you're going to forget about the Most High because they're going to make you. When you read the book of, of Daniel, what did Nebuchadnezzar do? Try to make them forget their God, made them switch their name, and they had to take the name of Yah out of their name. So those that had El, which is short for Elohim, or those that had the, uh, the name Yah in their name, he switched it and called them Belteshazzar. They have his God's name in, in their name. So it's gonna, you're going to start bowing down to wood and stone and images and idols. Read on, come out. And among these nations shall you find no ease. Neither shall the sole of your foot have rest. Y'all want rest. You want to know why you're oppressed. You want to know. So is it really the oppression that has the power over us? Or did y'all say you would not find any rest? Read on, Kanab. But y'all should give you there a trembling heart and failing of eyes and sorrow of mind. Well, you got to be scared every time you got pulled over. I don't care if you are in the right. Sometimes you got to have that little trembling just because of we know it could go down. Read on. And your life shall hang in doubt before you. And you shall fear day and night and shall have none assurance of your life. In the morning, you shall say, with Elim, it were even. And at even, you, you shall say, with Elim, it were morning. For the fear of your heart, wherewith you shall fear, and for the sight of your eyes, which you shall see. And Yah shall bring you into Egypt again with ships. By the way, whereof I spake unto you, you should see it no more again. And there you shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men and bond women, and no man shall buy you. So that's the Hebrew Israelite famous go-to verses, right? But let's read that thing in that proper context. Yes, it is true that we were scattered throughout all the nations of the earth. We were enslaved as bond men and bond women. Yes, that is true. But the question is the why. The why. And so when you now jump at the kings, when we see Josiah is going to inquire of the Most High because he's reading this book, and it says, go ye and inquire of Yah for me and for the people and for all Judah concerning the words of this book that is found for great is the wrath of Yah that is, uh, that is kindled against us because our fathers have not listened or hearkened to the words of this book. The Most High is upset with us because our forefathers did not adhere to the words of this book. And so today we're going to still ignore the book? Come on up. Use common sense for the nonsense. Josiah was like, we got to follow this book. I understand why the Most High is angry with us. What must we do to get the Most High's anger off of us? Verse 14. So here we are the priests and I come and Akbar and Shaphan and uh, Ashia went into Huda the prophetess, the wife of Shalom, the son of Tifa, the son of Haras, keep of the wardrobe. Now she dwelt in Jerusalem in the college and they communed with her. Pick up in 15 for me, Kanaki. Help me out a little bit. Back in Kings, sleek out. Back in Kings, Second Kings, uh, uh, twenty-two and fifteen. Can I? And she said unto them, "Thus saith Yalim of Israel, Tell the man that sent you to me. Thus saith Yah, Behold, I will bring evil upon this place, and upon the inhabitants thereof, even all the words of the book which the king of Judah have read, because they have forsaken me." And I burned incense unto other gods, that they might provoke me to anger with all the works of their hands. Therefore, my wrath shall be kindled against this place and shall not be quenched. Hold here for a second, Kanak, y'all. So what did the prophetess respond that Yah said to the king thus far? What was the response? What is this prophetess telling the king that's going to happen? That he was still going to carry out what he said he was going to do. One more time, Iman, because you know y'all always repeated things to make sure Israel get it. So say it again, Iman. That he still was going to carry out what he said he was going to do. I like the fact y'all ready to start being righteous, but it's been too long now with this wickedness. I'm carrying this act out. <laughs> yes, you're reading about the wrath, but that wrath coming because y'all have already done too much. Israel have already been too wicked so keep talking about the oppressor all you want to, 
But Yah is the oppressor. Yah has already prophesied in his word, this is what's going to happen because of this, that, and all this wickedness and all these things that you've done, all these idols, all this false worship. I'm going to do this. And now because you did not repent after all these years, this is going to be fulfilled. Pick up for me tonight, God, read forward. Verse 18. But the king, but to the king of Judah, which sent you to inquire of Yah, thus shall you say to him, Thus saith Yah the name of Israel, as touching the words which you have heard, because your heart was tender, and you have humbled yourself before Yah. When you hear when you heard what I spake against this place and against the inhabitants thereof, that they should become a desolation and a curse, and has rent your clothes and wept before me. I've also heard you say of Yah. Behold, therefore, I will gather you unto your fathers and you shall be gathered into your grave in peace. And your eyes shall not see all the evil which I will bring upon this place. And they brought the king word again. Hallelujah. So what's the other part of this response, Mr. McCall? And I want, want a couple of y'all to give the response on what y'all are getting out of that. And then I want to give, give, give my highlight. So what are you getting out of that point? That Yah honored him because he turned his heart towards him, towards Yahuwah. And so because the wrath is still to come, he did not want him to suffer through it. So he took him to his grave to spare his, to spare him of all the evil that was going to come upon his nation. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Is there anybody else? All right, so there's nobody else. And here's why I say, I love this. This is a good read. What I get from this is, as Ema said, he's going to bring that judgment through. I'm, I'm, I'm just, this place is about to be wiped out. It's about to be desolate. They're they about to be scattered. They're about to be destroyed. They're going to be on the run because of all this wickedness and all this sin. They've become too wicked. But go back to the king also and say, but king, because of your heart, because when you heard the words, when you read the words, you humbled your heart, you trembled, you understood why I was upset. You wanted to do right by me that because of that, Brian, you can still be saved and go in peace. I'm going to spare you from that. Akoti Marsha, Kanaka, Aharon, Moriah, Zakan Yelajahu, Talia, Tony L, Shah Shamar, iPhone Shakira. Brother Michael, Zakane Eliyahu, the two phone symbols that I don't know who numbers they are, I believe one of them might be Okoti Misha, Shaquan, uh, 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 House of Yourself, Captain Yohanan, Ima Audrey and Ima Nuka, Ima Badia and your household, Zakane Yaikwa, Miss Lily of Yah, Uziel, Sister Val, Talia, because you have started hearing the word of the Most High, because you are humble your heart. Forget what everybody else is going on and stop feeling sorry for people that don't want to do right. Understand that Yah's destruction is still going to touch this earth. But because we are hearing his call, because we are humbling our hearts before him, we have an opportunity that even though destruction will still come, he made us live our, live our lives out in Shalom. We may have a little tribulation here or there, but he will either take us like he took Enoch, Eliyahu. We may die and go to the grave and be come back up in the resurrection to the newness of life. To enter into his set apart kingdom when it comes, if our flesh dies before that time comes. But knowing we can go in shalom, we can go in peace. Why? Because we are humbling and our hearts is trembling at wow. As I can, Yaakov said, we ain't been doing none of this stuff. Josiah was like, I now get it. Ema Amelia, I can't leave y'all to see your smiling face up there. I didn't say you. And the same for you, Ema Amelia. I don't want to leave no name out on this call. I coach it to Rena. Let's speak life into one another. Let's speak obedience. I coach you, Lynette. Good to see you. Gain strength for the word of the most high. And learn how to be bold and courageous. And regardless of who is not walking in truth, 
Understand that the most high is not a respecter of persons. And it is not about the how many. It's about the how many. It's not about the how many. It's about the how many. Does anybody need me to explain that or do you get that? How many was wicked before Noah's time? Just in case somebody don't get it. Everybody, except for who? The eight that was on the ark. So how many were saved? Eight. How many was destroyed? Everybody else. So gain strength from the word of Yah and still understand that, yes, sometimes our nation will be oppressed. Our nation will be going through things, but there's still a reason for it. It is painful. It is hurtful. We need to be praying for we need to be being advocates when we can be advocates in the right way, not going out trying to incite riots. We need to be going out and speaking truth. We need to be going out saying, repent ye, repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And we can be saved. And so it's all written throughout the word that the most high would deliver those who humble themselves before him. But it does not mean as when he went out of Sodom and Gomorrah, when Abraham just said, what if there's 50? What if there's 40, 30, 10? And the only people made it out was Lot and his daughters. So we can always see that the most high is not about the how many, but he's about the how many. How many will walk upright in righteousness and refrain from sin and denounce idolatry and return to the most high. And as we read this tonight, we can see that this king realized that the forefathers were not doing the will of Yah. And that's what we need to identify today when the forefathers or when we ourselves are not living according to the will of Yah, that we do denounce, renounce, stop doing, tear down all idols, all false ways, and walk in the way of the Most High and esteem his name, his name alone. And tonight, Mr. McCoy, I hope that the word was well edified and well received. I give all praise, honor, and esteem to the Most High for giving me strength to be encouraged on this night. And I hope you've been encouraged to continue on the journey of walking righteous in a time when unrighteousness is reigning supreme. So Mishpacha, stand strong in your faith in Yah, because the Most High will deliver the, the few when the many is not adhering to his word. So I now yield to the imams and elders. If y'all have any words to say or share on before we open the floor to everyone else, you know, uh, y'all let me know. Uh, and those that are in the room, I'll bring the uh, computer closer to you so they can hear you. And to those that are online, raise your hands and we we'll start that way, and then we we'll open it to everyone else after the imams and elders have spoken. Imams, y'all have any words first? Okay, I'm sitting here on this table that should be over here, and y'all let me know if y'all hear Imam when she starts talking. I just want to say that since we've been reading Kings from week in to week out, we see, and he was righteous, and he walked in the walked righteously in the sight of y'all. And then the next week we read of a couple that were wicked and they did wicked in the sight of y'all. So we have this knowledge. Mm -hmm. We see it. We're reading it. There are people in the world and people still in the churches who don't have it. Mm -hmm. Why don't we make a vow to be that remnant? Hallelujah. To profess the truth and, and to make the change and to make the difference. Mm -hmm. And to walk according to his statutes, we can do it. Hallelujah. I mean, just, just for those of us who are online tonight, we mm -hmm. just made that vow to do that. Hallelujah. It's a total lesson. Hallelujah. Very well. Hallelujah. I thank you for what you said, Imam, about making that vow. Can everybody hear Imam good? Can. Can, I can. Okay, Hallelujah. You want me to cut you any words? Lori, if uh, Iman Newkirk is speaking, we don't hear her. Oh, I'm sorry. When I was carrying it, I must have missed and muted it. <laughs> okay. Go ahead, it's, Iman, a, it's a toad, toad mess, and I agree with Iman Audrey. We can just make that vow because this... Uh, there's a few of us and they see how we walk and, and like we, it was taught before, they watching us, they watching us. And so if we can make that difference, there'll be other people coming in, a tob tob lesson. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 
All right, elders and emails online, do y'all have any words? He spoke what I needed to say, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. In my body, I, was, I can't yeah, I agree with okay. everything that I, has already been said. So blessing. Oh, praises, all praises. Thank you, Ima. Thank you, Ima. Ima, Amelia, you got any words tonight? I'm, I'm going to message you tonight. I know you normally quiet all the time, but if you have any words, Ima? Okay, Ima says she's still going to be quiet, so I, I, I ain't going to mess with Ima. I'm going to let her slide. Okay. All right, elders, do y'all have any words before we open it to the... Uh, Rest of the Mishpaka. Yes, sir. I can Yaqua. Toda more. Hello, yeah. Hallelujah. Uh, for this lesson. There's a couple of things that that um um you edified that kind of kind of uh resonated with me, you know, like <clears throat> when they found when they found the book and they wanted to the book of the law. And they wanted to 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 come back to the Most High, the right way, you know, um, um, like you said. And and the, and the churches nowadays, if they want their people to to think that they're going back to the Most High, if they're if they're pleasing to the Most High, and they say you don't have to worry about the Book of the Law, you know what I mean? The 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 Tanakh and really Torah, you know. Um, and, and 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 that just resonated with us. If 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 we want to know how to serve the most high, what pleases the most high, we we, we got to come back to, to the Torah, <laughs> you know what I mean? Those of us that were, that was not brought up in it, you know? Um, so hell out, y'all, that, that, that was one of the things that, that really stood out to me. And the other thing too is, um, you know, this is king, this is, he has all the power now in the Southern kingdom, but he humbled himself, you know what I mean? Like, like, uh, he kind of took that, 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 that uh, supreme attitude out, except the attitude that I'm king and, and, and we're going to learn how to serve the most high, but he humbled himself so he could understand how to serve the most high. And then in righteousness say, hey, kingdom, this is what we're doing now. <laughs> you know, we ain't going to go down that path uh, that, that our forefathers did. This is what we're going to do now as your king, you know, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for your words, Zakane. Thank you for your words. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, Zakane Eliyahu, any words? Uh, Yelajahu, any words? All right. All right. If the elders don't have any words, any uh, Akim, Akio, have any words? Okay, so I can't, Eliyahu, I see you. The floor is yours. Shabbat Shalom, Mishpaka. Shabbat Shalom. Our strength, our wisdom, our purpose, everything is tied up in our obedience to those laws, statutes, and commandments that were given to us. And when we depart from it, we are more naked than a jaybird. I've never seen one, but they probably look a sight. Um, but this is indeed our strength. No matter what's going on, if we stay true to it, that's our wisdom, that's our strength. It helps us endure whatever it is that we face. And I yield. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Like you said, we don't want to be caught naked as a jaybird. You know so, and I've never seen one either, but I don't want to be caught naked without no commandments. <laughs> Thank you for that, Zakay. All right. Shah Shamar, the floor is yours. Aki. Okay. Ken, you know, uh, yeah, I just want to say, you know, all praise to the Most High, you know, for allowing me to bring out um, you know, this lesson. Yeah, I definitely learned a lot. Um, and of course, you know, all praise to the Most High for God and everyone else to bring out their points as well. Uh, one thing that stood out to me was, uh, you know, um, the humble, the concept of a humble heart, you know, obedience and a humble heart. Mm -hmm. You know, a humble heart can go a long way, you know. You know, it can save one from death, you know, it can deliver one from uh, sickness. So, 
Yeah, that's something that stood out to me. A humble heart could definitely go a long way. I yield. Hallelujah, hallelujah. That, that is def definitely true. And, you know, and it always says Israel is stiff neck, you know what I'm saying? So that humble heart is key, you know what I'm saying? And that, that, that stiff neck is what takes us down a lot of times. But that humble heart is what the most High is looking for, that broken contract and humble heart. So thank you for your words, uh, Shy. Uh, uh, Aki Michael, the floor is yours, sir. Hallelujah. Um, hallelujah. I just wanted to say that it was a total blessing. And um, one of the greatest things that I think I'm learning now is just the greatest offer, the greatest sacrifice that I, sacrifice that I can give y'all is just my obedience. So I'm really just learning, trying to learn how to um, allow him to help me to just be obedient and to do what he is saying to do and requiring me to do. So I yield. Uh, hallelujah, hallelujah. And um, uh, just to support you and to back you in the word, the Most High said he would rather have obedience than sacrifice. So like you said, the, the, the best sacrifice we can offer him is just a sacrifice of being obedient to him. And we all need to work on that more and more each day. So thank you for your words. And we all growing in that understanding. So hallelujah. Samir, you had some words? Okay. All right. Well, Mish I uh, don't see any other hands up. So we're going to give all praise, honor, and esteem to the Most High. All praise, honor, and esteem to the Most High. Uh, bless his holy name. Bless his holy name. And uh, I definitely enjoyed it. You know, this is my inspiration for the day. I'm definitely so uh, uh, joyful that I still made it to the Shabbat. And this uplifted my Ruach even more. So all honor and esteem to the Most High for the power of his word. Um, at this time, I'm going to ask Sar Yohanan if he would do uh, the closing Teflon. Uh, Mishpaka, we will not have the uh, cultural portion tomorrow. We'll be going right into like praise and to uh, two minute water tomorrow. I will not be doing the cultural portion in the morning, but we will be having service, most I willing. And I will be on for service in the morning. Just will not be starting at the uh, 1230 cultural portion. We'll be starting more around the one o'clock mark um, tomorrow. Um, and going right into praising and two minute warning and stuff like that. So I will not be on at 12 30 for the culture portion. So, uh, sorry, Johanna, if you can put that out in the group messenger as well later on, um, that will be told. So, no cultural portion tomorrow, but we will still be having uh, service and praise um, tomorrow. So, all honor, esteem be to the most high. Hallelujah. And sorry, Johanna, I'm going to open the floor to you now if you will do the closing Tefla. Canada. Down. Is our clear our minds. Blessed be Yahuwah Elohim. The Elohim of our forefathers, the Elohim of Abraham, Yitzhak, Yaakov. The Elohim of Yahshua, Mashiach, our salvation, and all your anointed ones that gone before. Abiyah, your children want to say, Toda Yah, for another coming into the Shabbat night, Abba, for another coming into the Shabbat lesson, Abba. Abba, we want to say, told our Yah, for you lifting up the spirits and the more Abba, to do the, to give him the strength and the motivation and the excitement to do the lesson tonight, Abba, for everything he was going through this week, Abba, the loss of his Abba, Abba. We want to say, told our Yah, Abba, that you have a plan for the more Abba, as you have a plan for his Abba, Abba, that his Abba is at ease, at peace, at shalom, Abba. And your servant, Maurice Shemak Abba, he is told, Abba, he is good. And he's know he is, his Abba is in the good hand of the Almighty Yah. Abba Yah, we're just asking you to continue lifting up the spirits of your children that's still mourning, still grieving over lost ones, Abba that we know that our lost ones is, probably, is not here in the physical form, Abba, but we know they're somewhere out there in the spiritual form, Abba. And they live through us, Abba. As you live through us, Abba. We is your representation on this earth, Abba. We should be walking in you and truth, Abba, and righteousness, Abba. We should be walking in the character you, Abba, so Abba, continue leading your children, Abba, into that light, Abba, into that righteous, Abba, to that path to the kingdom. 
that makes you smile, Ivan. That makes you happy, Ivan. We want to please you, Ivan, because you are a loving, honorable, caring father, Elohim, Ivan. He might not do enough to please you, Abba, but this is made the petition on behalf of all your children, Abba, that there's no us without you, Abba. We wouldn't be able to do the things we do without you, Abba. So I told her, yeah, Abba, for nurturing your children, Abba. To making some of our elders that's up in age reborn back to children to learn Abba, your way, your word, your Torah, Abba. And told her, Yah, for the weapons, Abba, and we're not doing right, but we are able to wake up and learn and repent for the wrong that we do, Abba, and get right with you, Abba, because that's the love that you give us, Abba. That's the opportunity you give us, Abba, to get it right with you. As we all gonna call it a night, Abba, and get ready for another Shabbat lesson in the morning, Abba, in the afternoon. We just ask you for a shalom rest, Abba. That we be refreshed when we get up in the morning, Abba, getting ready for another lesson by the Moray, Abba. That you strengthen the Moray in the morning, Abba, to do the lesson, Abba. And strengthened as I came when he puts out the two minute warning hour. Warning your children. Give us that message that we need, Abba. That we need on a weekly basis, Abba. Blessed be you, Yahuwah Elohim. Blessed be the name Yahuwah Elohim. And bless who come in them, Yahuwah Elohim. Hallelujah. 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 Shalom. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Uh, Mishpachah, love you all. May the Most High give you rest on this night. Enjoy the rest of your Shabbat. And I'm going to say Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Ahaba and Shabbat Shalom.